Hello there, this is Hans Forsner with Navcon Engineering. This video is a introduction to the Insol sound insulation prediction software. The software is uh, developed by Marshall Lay Acoustic and I'd like to uh, go over the Insol version 9 software. This is revision 22 and uh, the first thing I like to get started is uh, here this is the general opening of the software. There is a double panel construction that always comes up and um, there may be other views that you can get and part of that is uh, the option that you can change the views of the different uh, um, yeah, the toolbar, the construction tabs and other tabs. So for example right now we have the install tool, toolbar here at the very top construction bar here on the left hand side, the panel tabs are in the top right corner, and the architect table up here, the description also up in the, the graphics, and uh, the panel filter and absorber in the way it's configured right now. So if I select the toolbar, it moves it here to the right hand side. I personally don't like that, so I like to have the toolbars here at the top. If you select the panels, panel tab then the panels tabs show up here between the construction tab also something that I don't necessarily uh, prefer so it's up to you how you want to arrange the toolbars the construction tabs or the panel tabs here <clears throat> we see in the center the uh, this, uh, the graphics in terms of a 3d view uh, we can switch from a 3D view to a 2D view here on the bottom left corner. So this is a 3D view and a 2D view for the wall construction. Uh, if we have a ceiling construction, it looks like this. The floor construction also, roof and so on. And <clears throat> the description that we are getting is always from either left to right or from top to bottom, All right? So here we have a construction of a wall that is made out of, in this case, a plasterboard. Then we have some timber studs with some fiberglass in the middle and then or in the cavity. And then we have a second plasterboard. We can, uh, just to finish up the graphics, uh, there's also an opacity factor for the 3D view. So we can uh, make the display more visible or see-through. So here we can see the, the frames a little bit clearer. Uh, in some cases that may be uh, preferable to see through the materials, especially when you start uh, looking at triple wall constructions. I typically don't have the opacity active, so I'll, I'll close that. So now um, let me discuss uh, the different uh, panels. So here on the top right corner, we can see the different panels. So here we have the single panel construction and uh, that basically means we have a single layer or single panel that can be built out of up to six different layers of materials. So for each of these layers, we can select a material. And for each of these layers, we can also increase the number of linings. So here in this case, it's one lining of, in this case, a plasterboard. We can make it to two, three, four, five. And again, with each layer, of course, we're increasing the mass of that panel. We can add a second layer with a different uh, material. And so now we have two materials in panel one. And uh, with each material that we're adding, uh, we are increasing the surface mass. So we increase that and you can see at the bottom left here that the surface mass of this configuration increases slowly. 
in this uh, display that we see here in the bottom uh, left-hand corner of the graphics, we also see what this panel one uh, that we have a coincidence frequency and now at 34 kilohertz, 3.4 kilohertz, and a surface mass of 4.7 pounds per square foot. If you want to work in uh, not in imperial units but in metric units, uh, you can just uh, change that in the settings under projects and settings. So I won't. I just mentioned this here. So in case uh, you want to work in metrics, uh, that's possible. So now let's uh, discuss uh, the material selections that we have. So there's different ways of doing material selections. So you can either type in a search criteria, for example, in gyp gypsum. And now all the products that have gypsum in the label, in the name of the product name that's in the material database, are being listed. You can uh, remove that. And we could also do a search by category. So in this case, gypsum or masonry materials. So now all the masonry materials are listed. Or if you have a specific manufacturer in mind, we could select by specific manufacturers. So these are some of the options that we have here. So we go back all manufacturers, all categories. And so here we are back to a triple, um, yeah, or two layer panel one material. And um, let me just uh, mention a few other things here in the graphic display. So we have a graphic display here on the bottom right, which gives us the STC curve and the reference curves from the STC. So we have these dashed blue line, dashed blue line that gives us the reference and the green dots and green line that gives us the transmission loss prediction for the current construction. We can uh, set a comparison, which means we are basically yeah, keeping a certain prediction in the background. So here we could say this is uh, panel one, gypsum, uh, a plaster, plaster, and uh, uh, yeah, actually plasterboard, and then three layers, for example. And now we could say we change this and we go back to just two layers, or just one layer. And then you can see here now that we have the differences between the different combinations of layers. So we could go back to uh, a second one, make this a second comparison. So this is plasterboard with two layers. And then we can remove that. And so here you can see the, uh, the overall change between the different layers, how that increases the STC prediction. Uh, so of course, from one, pan, one, uh, one plasterboard to two plasterboards, we are doubling uh, the overall weight. So yeah, probably somewhere, somewhere a 60 B increase. And then from two panels to three plasterboard panels, um, then of course the overall increase is uh, much less, so we only get uh, somewhere around a 3 dB increase in the STC. So let me remove the comparisons, and then we are back to just one panel. So what is the frame here and the single panels? Uh, single panels, uh, let's uh, set up a frame. And here, one of the options you have, you can add uh, a stud if you'd like. And then you could add a fiber materials. So actually uh, what's probably more likely is something like this here, uh, some sort of a steel stud, and then we have uh, one layer of fiber. So this could be, for example, a enclosure for a um, yeah, uh, acoustic enclosure that has fibers on the inside 
could be a compressor building. And then here we can uh, basically show how much that fiber will improve the overall STC rating. So here we can uh, maybe use mineral wool and uh, whatever thickness. And again, here we have an STC rating of 29 dB. And if we uh, take uh, use the comparison, so this is um, steel with wool. And then we remove the wool. And then here you can see how much improvement that uh, acoustic material is providing in terms of the STC coating. All right. Now, in terms of this, the frame, we have uh, here on the right-hand side of the frame um, the cavity width, stud width, uh, stud spacing, and so on. Of course, for this single panel construction, it really has no if impact, but I just want to mention that because that will be the same um, parameters that are used for the double and triple uh, panels where we have frame one and a frame two. Now, uh, just to co complete this uh, input here, uh, in terms of the fiber, we have, uh, just like with the material panels, uh, we have uh, search criteria. So we can do like fiberglass, for example. So it shows you all that have fiberglass and they are in the category mineral wool. Um, or you could uh, do uh, search by fiberglass for specific manufacturers, right? So the different ways of searching your materials. All right. So let me uh, remove the comparisons and I want to continue with a double wall. So here we have the double wall. And um, again, in terms of the description, we can like see the description as it is right now, um, starting from left to right. Um, and here, I will I want to start that in the double panel construction. We have now a panel one. Again, with up to six layers, we have the frame one. And here we can uh, select between the different frame uh, types or materials, uh, either timber, metal, masonry. In this case, it would be either metal or timber. And then here we can uh, switch between the different uh, types of steel studs. And you can see that uh, some of the steel sets, the lighter and the heavier one, uh, will result in changes in the predictions, depending on how much uh, mechanical contact that they provide. Then there's also steel set with resilient rail. So here we uh, see a split here. It's maybe easier to see here in this uh, 2D view. So this is like a iso uh, mechanical isolation of the stud to the panel two. And again, here we can uh, use the comparison to compare the different uh, frames that we have here. Now, again, panel one, we have up to six layers. Panel two, we have up to six layers. So one of the um, improvements we, of, of course, can do is uh, kind of changing the number of layers on well, at least one of the sides. Um, and uh, some of that, of course, uh, will change the, um, the coincidence frequency of the second panel. So typically, that's a good uh, process of uh, having the panel one and panel two uh, different so that the coincidence frequencies of these two panels, they don't necessarily coincide or the same. Mm -hmm. um, so let me uh, show you uh, another thing here in terms of the materials. So here we can click now on each of these materials and uh, we get all the, the specs for each of the materials. Or you can click on the frame. It shows you the frame specifications. And here again on the panel one, what are the materials on the panel one? Now, uh, yeah, so as you also select uh, here panel one, then we can see here in the bottom what's the coincidence frequency, the surface mass. If we click on the frame, um, click on the frame, 
we are getting the uh, resonance frequency of the mass spring mass system. And here again, panel two, we would get the um, click panel two, we are getting the coincidence frequency of the panel two uh, yeah, assembly. Actually, let me uh, continue with the triple wall. So here again, uh, just the triple wall is a continuation of the double wall, except that we have uh, panel one, frame one, panel two, frame two, and panel three. So the same follows for the triple wall construction in terms of uh, selecting the frame or uh, defining your panel three layers. So let me continue down here in terms of the chart and tables. So here we have uh, the chart. And if we click on the tables, we are basically getting the information that we have in the graphic uh, in a table format. So here we can see the predicted uh, reductions or transmission loss values here. We see the frequencies. And then here we have the deviations. The deviations is basically the difference between the reference curve and the predicted curve. So here, for example, at four kilohertz, we have a deviation of uh, probably somewhere around eight decibels, right? And then at uh, 3.1 kilohertz, maybe four decibels. So here you can see eight and three. And again, the total of the deviation cannot be more than 32 decibels and the single deviation in a third octave cannot be more than eight decibels. So that's kind of where the reference curve, how it's assembled. Now here we have uh, references and comparisons that are uh, kind of set up here. The references typically are used if you actually have test data. So in this case, if I had, uh, for example, an Excel spreadsheet, with some test data. I can select the test data right here. Control C, copy that. And I could put that right into this table. And I'll select show. And now we have, for example, a comparison um, showing the green, the predicted, um, yeah, predicted STC for this uh, wall assembly. And then the dotted lines is a reference. So that could be, for example, from some, some test. And then you can uh, see how good these two match. Of course, uh, you can then decide if uh, maybe the uh, construction was not built as it is predicted right now. Maybe there's certain uh, yeah, spacing uh, that was uh, changed. For example, it could be that the frame is also probably very likely that it's also some sort of a steel stud. Um, yeah, and then you can see uh, just by changing that uh, to a steel stud here, uh, we are getting actually a much better match with the construction now. So this is kind of where the insole is very helpful to uh, kind of uh, play around and uh, see if there's certain uh, materials that were missing or fibers that are changed or uh, kind of you go with if then scenarios to see if there's a way to get a better match in terms of the construction to your test data. Now any of this information you can um, copy the data out so if we copy it click on this copy icon we can copy it and paste it right into Excel or you can paste it into your Word document and uh, do other uh, yeah, kind of documentations with that. So for example, assembly, here we have the text, the description, the uh, prediction for each of the third octaves, the STC or YATC. Um, we can also copy the illustration. So this uh, copies the illustration into a predefined uh, folder. And this concludes uh, my first uh, introduction on insole. Thank you for listening.